You are listening to the Moon Griffon Show podcast on KPEL965.com. Diane from Michigan, a disabled senior citizen trying to get by. Henry from Florida, a veteran fighting to make ends meet. Elena from Arizona, a mother struggling to feed her daughter. Hi, I'm Connie Britton, and I support Feeding America because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year, like Diane, Henry, and Elena. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. You took the first step and quit smoking, but even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. News Talk 96.5 KPL, Brobridge, Lafayette, broadcasting from the Matthew James Tax Pros Studios. Find them online at MatthewJamesTaxPros.com. He's about to rally in Raleigh. I'm Dave Anthony. Fox News former President Trump will start the last day of campaigning before the election in North Carolina, where supporters have lined up since 3 a.m. He's for the every, everyday American, and we need that in a president who's here for us. The former president will end his day in another toss-up state, Michigan. He'll also go to the biggest battleground prize, Pennsylvania, rallying in Reading and Pittsburgh. Vice President Harris will also be in that city before wrapping up a full day in Pennsylvania with a concert slash rally in Philadelphia. She is relying on this star power to drive out that voter turnout. She'll have Oprah, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Ricky Martin, and Fat Joe performing and speaking today. Fox's Brian Yenis in Allentown, where the vice president will also hold a rally. Urging people to show up to vote tomorrow because the majority of the vote is still out there here in Pennsylvania. Vice President Harris is starting in Scranton today. She'll be knocking on doors there with canvassers and volunteers. More than 77 million Americans have already voted early, nearly half the number of all ballots cast in 2020. There was election drama on TV over the weekend. Hello to our great sports fans, and I hope you're having a fantastic time. This ad released by the Trump campaign during NBC's NASCAR coverage and during Sunday Night Football. This comes after Brendan Carter, the top Republican on the FCC, criticized NBC for allowing the vice president to appear on Saturday Night Live ahead of Election Day without offering equal time to former President Trump. That's Fox's Ryan Schmelz. More rain is falling on Spain, where search crews keep looking for people still missing in last week's flooding disaster that killed at least 217 people. They're doing storm damage cleanup in parts of Oklahoma, where at least 11 people were injured when tornadoes hit. If I could describe anything about Oklahoma City, it's resilient. No matter what happens to us, we always rise up as a community. Police Chief Ron Basie, more stormy weather for forecast for today. America's listening to Fox News. The world of business moves fast. Stay on top of it with the Fox Business Rundown every Monday and Friday. Fox Business reporters, anchors, and hosts will bring you beneath the stock market speculation and boardroom drama to tell you about the biggest business stories of today. Whether you're on Main Street or Wall Street, Fox Business is invested in you. Listen to the Fox Business Rundown every Monday and Friday at foxbusinesspodcasts.com or wherever you download your favorite podcasts. It is time to take the quiz. Five days a week, it's five questions in less than five minutes. We ask people on the streets of New York City to play along. Let's see how you do. Including the pre-Super Bowl era, what NFL franchise has won the most NFL championships? I'm going to say the Cowboys. I guess I would say the Packers. How'd you do exactly? These get tougher, so hang on. Make sure you take the quiz every weekday at thequiz.fox. Thank you for... Election night is here. Join us here at News Talk 96.5 KPL as we bring you up-to-the-minute results and expert analysis. Join me, Joe Cunningham, and Jamie Angel, host of Acadiana's Morning News, from 6 to 11 p.m. on Tuesday night as we cover every twist and turn in the race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. And don't forget that control of Congress is on the line and we'll be following every House and Senate race that matters to you. Join us on the radio or use the KPL app to listen live online to Election Night 2024, brought to you by the tax pros at Matthew James Tax and Wealth Management. I had an important job. And it wasn't just a job, it was keeping my brothers and sisters safe. 
And coming back, it felt like kind of thrown away. It's like, you're useless. You know, um, we don't really have a need for you now because you can't really do anything for us. That's the way I felt. If it hadn't been for Wounded Warrior Project, I honestly don't know if I would be here. It was the camaraderie that I saw and had. It was like, I got my family back again. We all felt the connection, you know, like that brother and sisterhood. See how Wounded Warrior Project empowers women veterans like Donna by visiting woundedwarriorproject.org slash empowerwomenvets. Did you know that every year, 11 to 1,200 children are experiencing homelessness in Lafayette Parish? The Gifting Grace Project, Acadiana's Homeless Children's Outreach, works to provide and support these children throughout the year. Every donation goes to support these children and provide them with backpacks with school supplies, hygiene products, snacks, and more. Go to giftinggraceproject.com to learn more information or text GGP to 53555 and donate today. Thank you. Bikers Against Child Abuse empowers children to not feel afraid of the world in which they live. For more information, visit BACAWorld.org. Our helpline is 866-885-9474. BACA, breaking the chains of abuse. This hour of the Moon Graffon Show is brought to you by Champagnes, located in the Oil Center. Champagnes, going the extra mile. The views expressed in the following show are those of the hosts or hosts only. They do not represent News Talk 96.5 KPL or Town Square Media. Hi, y'all. Welcome Moon Graffon Show on the road today in beautiful Monroe, Louisiana. I'm actually in the studio where I started over 31 years ago, right here in Monroe, Louisiana on KMLB uh, with Bob Holiday and the gang. So I'm, I, w- I would tell you I'm sitting in the old chair, but I'm, lit- I'm a little bit more to the right. That means my guests will have to be to the left. I know Paul Hurd's going to stick his head in. I, I got a guy that y'all hadn't heard a lot about statewide, used to be on all the time. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. I always call him a mentor, not for the radio program, for about politics in general and how to rethink and uh, think things out. And, and he gives me a new approach. He challenges me. He always has. But he's also a friend, and we don't agree 100% of the time, which is even better. Uh, a guy by the name of Lyle Miller. And uh, Lyle's been a, a guy that's watched this stuff. He's a, a gentleman that's has got his hand on the pulse of a lot of stuff. You understand we'll talk a little medical with him, but... Uh, all that coming up as the program unfolds today. It's great to be back in. I was just told by my producer, Walker Griffon, that uh, Dennis Allen, the Saints have fired Dennis Allen. Once again, just breaking, the Saints have fired Coach Allen. If you're a football guy and a Saints guy, most people are going hip, hip, hooray. I don't, I don't, I'm a little different. I like to, if you're going to fire a coach, do it at the end of the year. Make them own the whole year. Don't bring in a coach and he wins, uh, you know, eight games left and wins five or six. So that's our new coach. And then he don't work out. So just let him own the whole year, two and seven. And the low-life Panthers beat him. So anyway, uh, Dennis Allen gone with the Saints. That's not what I'm here to talk about today, but I did want to make a brief mention. All right, uh, Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline. As always, 844-766-6607 is the number. Uh, we in Monroe. We're going to speak at the – we've got an opportunity to speak at the Washita, Washita uh, Women's Republic a group in West Monroe at the convention center. I'm looking forward to being over. It's open to the public if you want to come out and uh, have a little bit of fun with us today. I'm sure they wouldn't mind taking. Also, before we get into this, uh, Kane Rubber Pecan is back. The giveaway starts today. And Kane Rubber Pecans, if you're looking uh, for great pecans and great gifting for companies out there, Kane Rubber Pecans. Look, I've been using these people for 13 to 14 years. I know people that use them, and the people love the gifts from Cane River Pecans. They love pecans. You give the gift of pecans, you're going to make a friend. But Cane River Pecans is back, and they'll be back, and they'll roll in the rest of the year. They're a year-round company. Go to CaneRiverPecans.com. If you really want to win some, here's what you got to do. You got to email me, real simple, moon at moongraffon.com. 
you got to say, I want to win the pecans, but you have to leave a physical address, not a P.O. box. And if you don't leave an address at all and you win, you're never going to know because I'm not going to pick you. And I'll let the computer pick it, but it, I can't send it to no address. And the way this thing works is once I get it, boom, I send it to Cane Road Pecans. And that day or the next day, they're shipping a the product out. But it's a giveaway. I'll give out one every day for the next, uh, I guess, about six weeks. Cane River Pecans are back. It's a great gifting solution for your company to bless people. Just letting you know. So you want to make sure you check out our friends at Cane River Pecans. So anyway, the gift, it starts today. Email me, moon at moongrafon.com, moon at moongrafon.com. All right, election is here. It's here. It is 100% here. Tomorrow's the day. Tomorrow is the day that we're going to see what happens. Uh, uh, I, I ran into a, a person at a party this weekend, and, a, and it was a lady, really nice person, was debating who fit her values better, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. I don't understand that. I didn't tell her that. You know, I'm, I'm pretty open in the public. You want to talk, I'll talk. But... Uh, of course, I wouldn't friend uh, uh, Kamala Harris. I mean, people that are voting her, I just don't. I don't understand. It. I don't get it. I, don't, I do not understand how you can hate somebody and not pay attention to what you're voting for. And uh, I don't get that, folks. I know some of you people see the same thing. You 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 want to say something. You almost want to be ugly, but I'm not going to be like a Democrat person. That's a they want to vote for if the, if the United States of America wants to vote for Kamala Harris, just like if people want to vote and support Cleo Fields. Not in a minute. Then vote for it. And what you're going to get is crap. You're not getting anything. You're not, it's not going to be a good time for you. And you're going to act like, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I couldn't vote for Trump. He was such a bad guy. Just like people did with David Vitter. And I'll never understand that when I knew Bell Edwards was as woke as anybody you've ever seen. So that's, that's the part I didn't understand. So, I, you know, it was real nice. And most of the people are laughing and they all vote for Trump. But... Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I've read, let me tell you, folks, uh, now is the time I usually, I read stuff still because I got to do it for my show. But uh, if you think I'm going to sit down and turn that, that uh, the boob tube on and watch every opinion known to mankind, I don't like that. Some people live on all of it. I like to turn it over here and see what they're saying. And say, None of that matters. It doesn't matter. I'm not watching it Tuesday night. I'm not up in Florida cheating over here. They're doing it. I don't have to watch that. My life would be just fine. I want to know one. I want to know why some people, Kamala Harris is already telling people that, you know, uh, we might have had the votes counted by election night. How do you know that? Used to, we had it. Every state would come in election night just about. But not no more. We're supposed to be smarter and more technology, and now uh, we don't know if we can count the votes. Well, you can't count the votes. That's by design. You got to remember, you design a system. And I give Louisiana credit. I know people want to fuss and bicker, but I give Louisiana credit. There's the system. You got early voting, and today at 430, if mail-in ballots are not in the House today, by 430, there will be no more votes they're counting. If it comes in at 435, 431, tomorrow it's all thrown in the garbage. That's the ruse. That's perfect. We know the ruse. And then tomorrow, the people that hadn't voted early will go vote. And they're going to count all the mail-in ballots and early voting. That's the first numbers you're going to see. And they do it first. And they start counting early. Okay? Because there is no, oh, we found some ballots over here. That's all by design. It's designed to find ballots later. So you, if, 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 if you got a system like ours, I'm just telling you, if you got a system like ours, it's, uh, it's designed to get the votes in. It's the, if you got a system where they're not going to be finished counting votes on election night, it's designed for it not to be counted on election night. None of this is accidental. None of it's by surprise. Politics don't have many accidents, folks. It's by design. And it's by design to be able to have count votes laid and get late ballots in. All that stuff is by design. Ours is by design, so is theirs. So when Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris says, oh, we, not be, we may not be able to get 
When Kamala Harris said, oh, we may not be able to have all the votes counted by that night, it's not by accident. It's not by accident. None of that's by accident. The reason, we'll, the reason we have a rule and a law says at 4.30 on Monday, which is today, votes will be counted. I mean, uh, the last, at 4.30, if you don't have your ballot in, it's over for you. And then when they count votes, they're going to count the early votes and the ballots. All that's going to be counted early. So when them numbers start coming in, what you're going to see is early voting, mail-in voting, and early voting. And that's the first numbers you get. In a state like Pennsylvania, it's designed. We're not going to start counting to the polls close at 7. And what they're going to count is they're going to count everything on the machine and do all other ballots late. Why? That's when the, that's when the hanky-panky starts. And they know it. All right. One other thing, too. So I have been inundated. Okay, there's a guy named Brock Myers. He's a representative. And he pops up. He pops up on a We Trust Cleo Fields ad. Okay? And uh, people are living. I'm living, too. I mean, this, this is what I meant by Republicans. Why would Brock Myers support Cleo Fields? Now, before Brock Myers gets all upset at me, Everybody is seeing this. Everybody's upset at Representative Brock, Brock Myers in the Acadiana area. I don't know if anybody's not mad as hell that he's supporting Cleo Fields. Now, he sent out a deal to justify uh, what he did. And that's when you know, when they're trying to explain, that's when you know they're backing up. Some of you may receive a text message. By the way, I got it. From Acadiana Progressive Community Outreach, promoting certain candidates. Kamala Harris and Cleo Fields is in the picture. Let me be clear. This is an attempt by a third-party group to influence election. I did not give permission. Well, I'm asking something, Brock. How did you, why did your firm that you work with gave $26,000 to Cleo Fields? How come on your own Facebook you had this? On your own Facebook you had this. This is on his own Facebook, folks. It was a bingo event. He also showed up at Cleo Fields' birthday party. I ain't got nothing to do with Cleo Fields. Show up at his birthday party. Everybody in the delegation was invited to Cleo Fields' birthday party, and Brock Myers was the only one to go, or one of the only ones to go. And on his own Facebook, he puts, <laughs> he posts on his Facebook, his own Facebook about Cleo Fields. $26,000 from the firm to Cleo I'm, I'm not a Cleo Fields guy. Well, sure. It's easy to convince me that you're not. All I got to do is look at the facts. This is the guy that wants to run for the Senate and take Cocktail Cousaw's place if Cocktail Cousaw's win the Public Service Commission. And see, it's, it's all a game. Same people, same money. Rotate them in and out. Never change the state. And he said he voted two weeks ago. He voted for Donald Trump. Hey, Brock, what the hell does that have to do with you supporting Cleo Fields? That has nothing to do with you supporting Cleo Fields. You see, folks, we had closed primaries in these House and Senate districts. Brock would have to explain, like Psycho Bill Cassidy, why he did things he did. And in a closed primaries, Mr. Myers would have big problems, just like Cocktail Cousin would have big problems. So, Brock, you can sit here and say you don't support him, but everything we're reading about says you support him. That, that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we've got to take a break. More to come. Paul Hurst is going to join me after 930. Uh, we're going to take a break. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Tomorrow's the day. Please go vote if you didn't vote. I'll be at the polls at 6 o'clock. i got my four votes walking up to the poll. Looking forward to voting. Looking forward to this, to this being over, too. All right, we've got to take a break. We'll be right back. When you think about how you spend your money in retirement, what comes to mind? Probably travel, sunny beaches, and spoiling your grandchildren. But a recent survey found that over 30% of every dollar a retiree spends goes to taxes. Baby boomers were told for years to save money in their IRAs and 401ks and pay taxes later. Well, now that day has arrived, and boomers are shocked to see a third of their money going back to Uncle Sam. John Blanchett and the Matthew James Financial Group can help. What if you could? 
protect all most of your retirement wealth from future tax rate increases. Achieve a zero or near zero effective tax rate for most of your retirement years. Find out more. 337-366-8366. Isn't it time you got a second opinion on your wealth and retirement outlook? Learn how you could potentially kick the IRS out of your IRA. 337-366-8366 and online at matthewjames.com. Com. Louisiana is unique. The food, the festivals, even the bugs. It's termite season. Did you know termites are responsible for over $1 billion worth of damage in Louisiana alone? For over 60 years, J&J Exterminating has been shielding homes and businesses. 100% guaranteed against termites, pests, and mosquitoes. Louisiana-owned, customer-focused. J&J Exterminating. Call them today, make pests go away. J&J Exterminating. Get the shield. Yeah. Line One is a business telecom provider. Line One specializes in cloud-based communication with superior customer service. If you're frustrated with phone bills you can't understand, endless hold time to customer support, and phone system that is not meeting your needs, then you need to go to Line.One and schedule a free consultation to advance your business phone system. Line One, technology with a human touch. Go to Line.One and tell them Moon sent you. Again, that is line dot one. This thing on. This thing on. Look at here. I got something I want to say. Look out. Look out, y'all. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Move to the phone show. Great to have you back with us. Paul Hurd's going to be in the house in just a few minutes. Uh, a little bit about. Uh, a little bit about the, the that, a, that a ruling come down with the Cleo Fields district. I'm going to let him explain that when we come back, and I want you to know about that. It don't mean anything for this vote. Uh, you know, Cleo Fields, the one that uh, Representative Brock Myers is excited about, uh, that's the one I'm talking about. So, uh, anyway, we're going to talk about that with him, at least to start with, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, Jeff Landry's uh, tax uh, bill that we're hoping to, to hear more about it as the uh, weeks go by, but Remember, the election's tomorrow. The special session is Wednesday. It doesn't matter how you're tired or people are tired of it. We're going to roll right into special election for tax reform. And I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen any real bills, anything that was sponsored. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting like y'all are. We'll get an opportunity to see what's going on. I know the state needs a big change and a big overhaul. Uh, but there's a couple of three different plans out there. We'll see how that all breaks down. Uh, they, that, this is it. Kamala Harris, it will take time to count every vote. Why does it take more time now? We can ask Paul this, too, because he's dealt with voting and redistricting. And, I, and I'm telling you on the voting, it's real simple. Uh, everybody, every state, should I say not everybody, but every state sets up the kind of system they want. And in fairness to Louisiana, uh, the problems have been mail-in ballots, and that's been a major problem because what happens in these states, as you know, how many times have we been watching it go, well, we find 5,000 ballots sitting over here behind a cigarette machine. And so when Louisiana, if your mail-in ballot is not in at 4.30 today, your ballot's thrown, it's gone. It's they're not counted. And the best thing is, they, according to Nancy Landry, they start counting tomorrow during the day on all the early voting and all the mail-in ballots. They don't have to wait till 8 o'clock. That's when the polls close. So the first ballots you, ballot you get are the ones that would have came in by mail or would have came in early. And then the machines and stuff do the rest of the job. So these other states are not designed that way. I'm not saying all of them, but like Florida, and they're usually pretty quick on the voting. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Arizona, Maricopa County, they're designed to be able to be major players at the end of it if they need those votes. I even heard uh, Congressman Mike Johnson, he said on his program, he said it on one of the big pros programs this weekend that you got to too big to rig. And uh, I don't know nothing about too big. I don't even know anything about waves. I don't get into none of that. It's about people going vote. I notice in, in Louisiana, Will Sutton, who he's got to play the race card every time he writes for the devil's advocate. Louisiana black voters haven't come out strong. Don't sit this one out. But well, do you care if white voters go vote? <laughs> Do you care white people go vote? Or do you just care black people go vote? You know, you got to ask these, these people and journalists when they write these stupid stories, Louisiana black voters haven't come out strong. 
Don't sit this one out. What about white voters? Don't you want white voters to vote too, Will? But he doesn't. Will, everything Will Sutton writes in The Devil's Advocate, race, 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 race. They write, he writes nothing but race. Ask anybody that gets The Devil's Advocate. If they pick up and read a Will Sutton story, it's going to be about race. That's all a dude got in the playbook. And yet he stays on the payroll because I guess that's what, that's what they, they must pay him to do that. President Trump had a, actually, y'all, for the last two or three months, He's had a great election. He's made, I don't even know if really many or any mistakes he's made. Uh, Kamala Harris and that, uh, and the media and Biden and Obama and them have made mistakes every time they said something. I picked up the deal yesterday and I'm reading it and James Carvel nutted up again. James, I tell you what I wish they would ask James Carvel to do. If you're going to keep embarrassing yourself and he's embarrassed himself, he is horrible. They ought to at least tell him to take the LSU gear off. Take the hat and the shirt off. He's embarrassing LSU. Every time he goes out, I bet people go, look at that idiot from Louisiana. He's become a total idiot. He says Kamala, Kamala Harris is going to win. And that's not why he's an idiot. He can be right on that. I don't know. But everything he says is full of hate and vinegar, man. It is, it is always nasty, and he hates Trump. Carville don't care about what the old Democrat Party is versus the new Democrat Party. He didn't even care what they stand for. But, folks, it's, he's, he's embarrassing the state. He's embarrassing the country. And he's embarrassing my friends at LSU. Tell him to take the shirt off. I, everybody. I know people. I ate supper last night with a guy. He used to love Carville. He didn't like Carville in the politics, but he thought Carville was funny. So I asked him. Do you think Carver's still funny? He said, Mooney's obnoxious. I said, you used to laugh. He said, I used to think he was cute and funny. He said, he's horrible. He's embarrassing. And he said the same thing. He needs to take the LSU gear off. Tell him to put some Democrat Party gear on it. Tell him he's a trans voter. Tell him whatever he wants to on his shirt or hat. Take the LSU gear off and quit embarrassing the Tigers. Please. Remember, he's the only guy that ESPN ever apologize for him, having him on. They had to come back after a second and apologize they had him on. It was at the LSU-Alabama game. All right, we're going to take a break. Paul Hurd in the house. We'll visit. And uh, we'll take a break. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. With five Louisiana locations, I always make it a point to visit Superior Grill when I'm traveling in the great state of Louisiana. I love the food there. It's authentic Mexican food with a Louisiana twist. Their menu has all your favorites. Nachos, quesadillas, enchiladas, tacos, fajitas, hand-cut steaks, and the best margaritas in the state. You can go to Superior for lunch or dinner, and folks, you're going to thank me for it. My lovely bride and I eat at Superior Grill every chance we get. They're on Line Avenue in Shreveport, Government Street, and Highland Road in Baton Rouge, St. Charles Avenue in New Orleans, and on College Saloon in Lafayette. I'm talking great food, great service, and great margaritas. The best Mexican food with a Louisiana twist is found at Superior Grill, Shreveport on Line Avenue, Baton Rouge on Government Street, and Highland Road, New Orleans on St. Charles Avenue, and College Saloon in Lafayette. This is Moon Griffon. I'll see you at Superior Grill. This is Moon Griffon. My good buddy Jeff and the folks at Hudco Roofing and Exteriors is Louisiana's premier professional roofing contractor specializing in residential roofing services. Remember, your roof protects everything. You and your family and most of your possessions. And that's where Hudco Roofing comes in. These folks aren't just your average roofers. They're the number one roofing company in the state. Whether you need a repair or a brand new roof, Hudco Roofing has you covered. Hudco is a certain teed select shingle master and takes every roof all the way down to the decking to make sure there are no hidden damages. Hudco Roofing is also a state certified installer of the fortified roofing system. And that's a big deal. Anywhere in Louisiana, you can get a free roof inspection and quote from Hudco Roofing. Go to HudcoRoofing.com for quality workmanship, premium products, and unparalleled customer service. This is Moon Graffon. I trust Hudco Roofing of Louisiana, and so should you. HudcoRoofing.com. That's HudcoRoofing.com. Champagne's marketing. All- I heard the call to serve, so I answered. I earned a title. 
and discovered my purpose. I found belonging, an unbreakable bond with my fellow Marines. We fought to overcome adversity together in defense of our nation and its people. I've lived a full life, rich with meaning. And even though I no longer wear the uniform, I am still a Marine. My service has come full circle. I will always look after those around me. I will always uplift and support my country and my community. Because that is the promise I made. That is what it means to be a Marine. Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. Always Marine. The entire world watched. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. And humanity saw that the sky was not the limit. Achievement. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. This hour of the Moon Graffon Show is brought to you by Champagnes, located in the Oil Center. Champagnes, going the extra mile. Hi, hello, welcome back. Moon Graffon Show always all started for me right here in the KMLB studio in Monroe, Louisiana, broadcasting here today from our good friends at KMLB and the radio people, Bob Holliday. I'm so grateful for him for giving us the opportunity. Uh, 31 years we've been on air here. So uh, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Love the area, love the people here. Paul Hurd joins us. Of course, Paul's an attorney. Paul's also, he's been in the redistricting pretty much his whole career. Uh, does a lot of business work and things of that nature. First of all, good to see you. Good to be here. Hey, hey, like we've, old days. We've huh? been in this. We've been closeted together uh, for a, for a, almost thirty years. It's a small studio, but you know what? It always got the job done. That's you right. notice I used to sit on that side. Everybody, I put to the You're left right. of me in here. Uh, not that you to the left of me, but I put you to the left. All right. So uh, you came in with some news. Somebody just sent it to me about the so-called. I'm gonna call it the Cleo Fields District. So, court's going to look at it now. Who's going to look at it? What's going on? Right. The, the, the opinion, we call it Calais because our lead client was Calais, C-A-L-L-A-I-S. Right. Calais case is what you're going to see it called. And the Supreme Court, when you take these three-judge panel cases like we do, don't we won't get into why it's that way, but it's to make sure that we get a balanced opinion at the district court is the reason that procedure exists. All right. Our, our court said this is clearly a racial gerrymander. It's unconstitutional. But it happened at a time where um, the, <laughs> the, the governor and the secretary of state said, oh, golly gee, we can't get the election done soon enough to change it. So let us do it the bad way the, this year. And that's what we're doing. 2024 is under the district that's been held unconstitutional. The appeal goes to the Supremes. The Supremes can summarily affirm, summarily reverse what they did, or they can do what's called they take, they note jurisdiction. All that means is we want you to come up here and do oral argument and let us ask you questions. Okay. Because, and well, part me... of it is because some of the alle factual allegations that the court absolutely rejected the the state has just summarily reasserted them, and I think part of this is going to be to sort out uh, the hubbub from the facts of how racially designed this district okay. was. Well, let me go back and ask. So this case, the Supreme Court's going to hear this case. Yep, in okay. probably February or March. Okay, does that and the decision won't come out until June next year. Okay, but when they do a case like this, does uh, the Attorney General have to go argue for what we've done? The, the attorney general has said that the court was wrong and it's a good. I know district. that. I know. I know what Liz did. I'm, I'm not no, really. I'm, she I'm asking. Does attorney? I'm not talking about Liz. I'm talking about the attorney general of the state of Louisiana. He said, "Well, that's Liz. I get it. I don't care who the attorney general was. Are they going to argue that this district is bad? Are they going to argue no, this? No, they're going to argue this district is wonderful okay. and it wasn't. That, that bothers me. And it, oh well, you got to talk to 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 our attorney general. Um, yeah, because because uh, let she's going to argue talk, that this district to, is not to, racially designed. If you go talk to Republicans that made the vote that designed this district, basically for Cleo Field, every one of them said worst vote they ever made. 
And what I don't understand is, do you think this district, as we know it today, will be thrown out by the Supreme Court? Yes. Okay, and the reason I asked that is because it's the same got, district they threw out on. 30 years ago. I know. I agree with that. But you got Republican governor, Republican AG, Republican legislature voted for it. They've gone in front of a Republican-led Supreme Court to make a decision on what Republicans did. Now, I want you to follow me. I agree with you. It's I'm, gerrymandered the hell out of the handbag, and it should be thrown out. But I'm telling you, does that make a difference? Just who's arguing the case? What I'm telling you is is... All of the cases, I, I, I've now done three congressional redistricting yeah. cases, all on racial gerrymandering, all of them successful in Louisiana. I did one in Texas. I did one in Virginia. Okay. All right. Every one of them do not believe that Republicans and Democrats don't agree that dividing the population by race isn't good. They like race politics because it eliminates competition. It's the only kind of Democrats and Republicans are all together. It, it's just, the, it's just yeah. the voter that has to be offended. And that's really I, every one of these that I've won, that, that, that I've been involved with, that hit, when we won, the Republicans did it. So don't think this is anything new. I'm, I, I'm glad. I, 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 I didn't want you to say that, but. I'm glad you did. No, no, you wait, told me the truth. wait. The oh, Democrats, like the, the, the Democrats vote for it too. Don't oh, yeah, get me yeah. wrong. Well, in in a case like this, though, when you look at the district, you think this is going to be thrown out. If it's thrown out, and this district is no more as of June because the Supreme Court said it can't, does that mean who? If 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 Cleo Fields is in that, I hope it's Elbert Guillory. I wish it'd be a runoff. I just think I'm getting ready to have a lot of fun if it's a runoff. Okay, because I'm gonna bring everybody into this. I'm talking about every politician known to mankind. Uh, but does that mean if we win that that district will have to be redrawn again and we go back to the gone board? And when does it have to be redrawn by for the 2026 race? That's what we, what we have a problem with is the Democrats that are against uh, are in favor of this district are trying to slow this process down so that we can go into 2025. We get a decision late June 2025. Well, the good news is we've got a year before there's an election. <coughs> sure. And so... But if they could push it back... But it then it you always have the right to go to the legislature first. So we go back to the legislature. If they do another boomerang district I, i'm just trying to say something being nice <laughs> uh, a, a, a racially based district uh, then it has to be challenged again and then the old s stall this reminds me of phil ford when he was at north carolina all you're going to do is take the stall, ball and yeah. stall it Holy. and try to have an election under another racially gerrymandered district but it won't be another election before 2026 no, no, there's not. But what happens when the district comes? We we are affirmed that it's a bad district in June 2025. The legislature doesn't change it until November 2025. And then we have to challenge it. And we're on the same schedule I'm on this time. And what happens is I can't beat them to the Supreme Court in time. So they get to use another bad one. It's a stall. Oh, my God. That is horrendous. The, the Supreme Court has to save Louisiana from myself from from the, the, the perpetual alternative racial gerrymandering. Set our people free. I'm gonna tell you what. Just looking at early voting, and if you didn't have uh, knuckleheads like uh, Representative Brock Myers, who wants to be a senator supporting Cleo Fields. Uh, the Republicans are out voting in that district right now. There's only one Republican, is Elbert Guillory. He's a he's a black gentleman. If 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 you're a black person, why would you want to vote for a black Republican? And, and Cleo Fields has the money machine out. But the problem is, if we can get this to a runoff, we're gonna see who's Republican, who's conservative, and how many people gonna get involved, including the governor, the, the United States senators, and the representatives. Oh, they because need, if they don't get involved in this, well, we're going to help right. them get involved. If you want to get even crazier. They should have got involved now. 
if they if we get a runoff, and I think we will. I don't think. There's I think people that think that I. I'm listen. When it comes to elected officials and politics and money, they ain't no sure of nothing. So I just kind of no. There's nothing sure. I'm thinking that with enough split of the vote on the Democratic side, we're going to get to a runoff. But now, what happens? The rest of them have been decided. What happens if the House two seventeen two seventeen it, it, it is within a, a member vote. or two yeah. of of control by the Republicans or Democrats? Yeah. This is a national election. It is a gigantic election, and uh, I'm I'm gonna hope uh, that Congressman Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, he feels like they're gonna expand what they have, and I'm hoping I do. Man, that's yeah. true. I don't want it to come down to that, but if it does, you don't want to miss the Moon Graffon show for a month because I'm gonna be on it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them all in. They gotta all get involved. Anyway, let me take a break. Yeah, Paul baby. His name. We'll take a break. You're listening to the Moon Graffon show, Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline. We'll take a break and be right back. Telling you about Schumacher Homes for a long time. Now, for a limited time, you can choose from five different financing offers and pick one that works best for you. Whether you're an active duty, military, or veteran, you can take advantage of the exclusive VA construction loan offer. You can lock in 30 year fixed financing for as low as 3.875. How about that? Looking to stay in your home and start construction right away? A stay in your home loan might be right for you. With this option, you can stay in your home during construction and not worry about moving twice. And for you first-time home buyers, we're not going to forget you. For a limited time, they're offering 30-year fixed financing as low as 3.875. Other financing offices include no-cost refinancing, conventional loans, and FHA construction loans. If you're thinking of building your dream custom home, there's no time like the present to start building. SchumacherHomes.com. SchumacherHomes.com. Let them build your dream home. They're building dream homes one at a time. Our state is facing a budget shortfall left over by the last governor. Jeff Landry and the legislature already cut $2 billion for spending we don't need. Now they have to deal with this shortfall, but they've got a plan to deal with that and move Louisiana forward. This is what Governor Landry said. This Louisiana forward plan, when fully implemented by the legislature and ratified by the people of this state, will produce more jobs a greater prosperity, lower our taxes, and bring us a sustainable budget. This plan cuts taxes for the middle class and all taxpayers. With the income tax rate dropped to just 3%, job creators can grow the economy with lower taxes. Families and senior citizens, no more prescription drug sales tax. A different tax system which focuses on choices, not labor. And the Louisiana voters, we get the final say. Fixing the shortfall, Cutting taxes, growing our economy. Now that's moving Louisiana forward. Paid for by Protect Louisiana Values. This is Moon Grafon at Talk. Hi, hello, welcome back. Moon Graffon Show, broadcasting to KMLB Radio People in Monroe, Louisiana, where it all started for us. Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline, 844-766-6607. I want to say it again, Cane River Pecan Giveaway. Doing it starting today, be every day for about five or six weeks. Uh, yeah, boy, I'll tell you, if you had not tried Cane River Pecans, you don't know what you meant. Great for gifting your customers. That's what I do, and I so highly suggest you do. But we're going to give away a tin with some pecans in it, and we'll do it every day. All you got to do is email me, moon at moongraffon.com, moon at moongraffon.com, and say, I want to win Cane River Pecans. And here's the buck. You got to put your address. I can't ship it just to anybody. Paul Hurst sitting here. Paul said just whoever... Doesn't give you address. If they win, send them to you. You'll be okay with that. I'll yeah. Put your mic. Yeah, I can be the, the default address. Because <laughs> pecan, yeah, you know, pecan. But I, t- I, tell, I told Paul when he walked, he said, oh, it can't rub pecans. I said, uh, you're not my customer no more. <laughs> <laughs> Paul said, no, what? I don't get it anymore. Anyway, great to have you back in here. All right. So pretty much on the redistricting, 
it has a chance to keep being put back. And that's why I want to go back one more thing on this. And I told them all, and you told them all, and I would be wrong to say you didn't help me come up with the decision. And I, you know, I talked to a lot of people. No, we talked, to, we talked together with and, a lot of people and that we, know a lot about redistricting. And, and, and all we had to do in the case. Is get on when, the horse and ride. Well, when Judge Dick says, right. I want a new district, or I'm going to draw it yourself, <laughs> what you do is say, Judge, but no disrespect, here's our district. If you want to draw it, you draw it. Let me give you the scenario of what I think would have played out. She would have drawn a gerrymandered district. She'd have sent it over to fifth, two to one, she'd have lost. Then it went to the Supreme Court. And if the argument still was, you remember Nancy and everybody, argued, we don't have enough time, the Supreme Court would have said, hey, I ain't got enough time. Use the district, you use it. And here's the kicker. I, know. I, you, I think you taught me this, too. If the, gov- when the governor, not Landry, any governor, once they sign off the redistricting, the district that's running now is absolutely moot. It's over. If the you, new district is what they signed, correct? That's right. If you look at, at, at the normal bill that is a redistricting bill, uh, we all would think that there's Section 1 and it's got all the redistricting. You don't know, but the, it's usual. There's Section 2 and Section 3 and Section 4. And Section 4, I believe, is 4 says, and this repeals the prior district. And that was not held unconstitutional. So the old, what they did is they killed the old district. What they should have done, and you said it, I said it, what they should, they judge, judge Dick Roy. Judge Dick never heard the evidence nope. that, that we had successfully presented By the way, for in, 30 in all years. Fairness, now, Liz, had a, she had to go with the state. Is what I was told. But in all fairness, she used to come on this program and complain, give us a court date, give us a court date, give us a court no, date. No, and that's what happened. What happened is they didn't say, look, with all due respect, we're going to present the full case this time. When you do a preliminary injunction, you can, you can have abbreviated, limited evidence. When you have a trial, you get your trial. You get to present your evidence. And every time Louisiana... Uh, has defended a non-racial district, we have been able to successfully defend it. I got a, I got a scenario for you, but I know you like to play with dabble, so I'm going to let you dabble. Uh-oh. So we, 2024 and 2030, we're going to do another census. Our migration here is unbelievable. You got three kids that are not. And, I use you as an example. No, and it don't time. even matter about our migration, which we have, because we're not growing. Okay, so... We got we had eight, we went down to seven. Thank you, John Alario. We down to six. Thank you, John Alario. That was our leaders. We could go down to five. We're so going we down to, to five. If- so their argument from the left and Dell Edwards and the media was, well, we got a third of percent of black voters. We're going to have uh, two. That was the, they didn't have any argument. That was it. So what's the argument then if you go down to five? Do you still have two minority districts out of five? Because out of five, two. That's 40% now. That's way above how many black uh, registered voters and black people you have here. So what happens now? Do we go back to four Republican districts with one Democrat district? Because, Paul, right now, unless something major changes, we're going down to five. We're going down to five. So what's going to be the the racial setup then? Because Cleo feels if he he wins, and I pray to God we can beat him, but if Cleo feels wins, he's going to want to keep his district. Troy Carter's going to want to keep his district. And here comes racism and everything else. But at that point, you're not 33%. Oh, look, it's, uh, I'll even say it more more directly. Without a radical change in out-migration, i.e. something that revitalizes Louisiana's economy and the economy for our best and brightest, if we don't do it, hey, you legislators, I hear, I hear you get a chance. If we don't repeal Personal income tax, phase it out over three years. You can't phase it out over 10. You can't. No, you right. can't catch up. No, it won't matter in 10 because we'll be the last bus at the bus station. Yeah. Which if, if we don't repeal, I want to tie redistricting to what you're doing next week or this week. Wednesday. Wednesday's a special session. Jeff you, I, 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 Governor Landry. I, don't, you need, I know Jeff Wells, so I'll call him it, Jeff. It, it's Landry. simple. If you want to keep our congressman and fight over six and not surrender to five, 
you have to repeal personal income taxes. Oh, you know what's sad? We got five years. We're at the end of 2024. This is November the 4th. You're down to five years of making this train stop and head back. The you got to you got to turn. Five years is not a long time. You mentioned off the air. You know, North Carolina. I had a representative from North Carolina. I know they you started did. working yeah. on this in 2010. 15 years later, it's starting to get like they want it. We don't have 15 years. I, I was at a party. Actually, I've been in Monroe since Friday. Okay, me and my bride, we had things to do, saw the grandbabies, got to see a lot of friends and meet a lot of new people. And I, I, I'm going to say I talked to 8 to 10 people like you that have kids that are older, graduated, moved on, working. You realize every one of them had two to three kids. I found one that had a kid still in Louisiana. I told my wife I was floored. I said, I know it's bad, but these were educated people that have educated kids. You're one of them. Yeah. Okay. And when I say educated, I'm just talking about high school or college degree, but they're educated. They can read, write, do arithmetic, whatever. And they work hard. They're not here, Paul. We were doing, we, we were, uh, they had people coming in from all over. And I got another buddy of mine. He's an older guy. He's going to these funerals. And he says that the sad thing about it is, he said, they got to do these funerals two and three weeks out now. You know what? To get the family to get back. get the families back in. get it back in I'll town. I thought it was because they had a big old. No. No. You got to do it two and three weeks to get the family members back in. And nobody seems to care. And you hit it on the head. You got a plan out there. I hope somebody would run with your plan. Look, we, we, we published it on, and, and I've published one before this, but the most recent version of it, it's called the gold standard. We put it on the Hayride. We put it on Washita Citizen. Uh, we, we've put it out in a couple other websites. And the point of it is we can pay for it. Do not let them say we can't pay for it. How close are we to a supercharged revitalization of a three-year phase-out of personal income taxes, reducing our corporate income tax by half, not completely repealing it, makes us competitive and repealing and knocking the severance tax down in half. Right now, our severance tax to cut to the drill for oil and gas is is. 25 or 30 percent above you, you Texas. You know who you make it nervous? I was at a party and visited with some people. People that are tied to the government. Whether they business or part of the government. They always get, we got to go. They always start talking about how we replace the income. How we, if you got economic growth like you're talking about, that's so easily replaced it's not even funny. Oh, it's and, and all you have to do, all you have to do is cut 5 percent that we've been promised this. Give me 5% cut in state revenue reduction. Yeah. You're talking about spending cuts. And, it's, right. and it's paid for. Got to go. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Hey, man, we're going to do it. All right. Got to take a break. Be back. The Moon Griffon Merchandise Store is now open. Go to MoonGriffon.com right now and click on Merchandise. There you'll find men's tees, ladies' tees, polos, fishing shirts, lounge pants, hats, and more. Through November 15th, a portion of the proceeds will benefit the Cajun Navy hurricane relief efforts. Show your love for the Moon Griffon Show by purchasing some Moon Griffon merch. Go to MoonGriffon.com right now and click on Merchandise. New tax resolution. News Talk 96.5 KPEL, Brobridge, Lafayette, a town square media station. Broadcasting from the Matthew James Tax Pro Studio. They're working overtime, campaigning one last day. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. Hello, beautiful, beautiful North Carolina. Former President Trump at a rally in Raleigh that started a few minutes ago. If we get everybody out and vote... There's not a thing they can do. And if we don't, and if we don't, they have to get every person that ever signed anything in that horrendously dangerous party that's going to destroy our country.
Now, the former president will finish the day rallying in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and also campaign in Reading and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Vice President Harris will be in some of those same places, only campaigning in Pennsylvania today. She'll start by door knocking in Scranton, President Biden's hometown, before coming to a rally here in Allentown. She'll then make a campaign stop in Reading, Pennsylvania, with AOC and Pennsylvania's Governor Josh Shapiro, before ending today with two major rallies and concerts in Pittsburgh and in Philadelphia featuring stars like Lady Gaga and Oprah. That's Fox's Brian Yannis. Nearly 78 million Americans have already voted early, almost half the number of total votes from 2020, and that number's going to keep rising. Voters in 10 states are still able to cast in-person ballots today. Alaska, Arkansas, Colorado, Iowa, Indiana, Missouri, Montana, Rhode Island, and Wyoming. Fox's Evan Brownhouse and Senate races are also on ballots. Republican Senator Rick Scott facing a tough challenge in Florida, but he tells Fox early voting numbers are good for him. Republicans have way outpaced Democrats so far. However, as Fox's Steve Harrigan reports from Naples, Florida, Democrat Debbie Mukersell Powell could get some help from issues on the ballot. One is an abortion initiative. It would extend Florida's strict abortion ban from six weeks to roughly 24 weeks. The second would be legalizing recreational marijuana. Both of these ballot initiatives would need 60% to win. America's listening to Fox News. Interesting people are talking to Will Kane. I said, what do I call you? I call you Dwayne, I call you The Rock. He said, now that I own it, I can call now you that, The Rock. Yes, I own it now, you can call me The Rock. Our next guest needs no introduction. It is Dr. Jordan Peterson, my old friend and frenemy, Stephen A. Smith. What is going on here? I see the Will Kane show in the background. I see the microphone. Watch it live at noon Eastern, Monday through Thursday on foxnews.com. And get the podcast five days a week at foxnewspodcasts.com or wherever you download your favorite podcasts. From the Fox News Podcasts Network, the Fox News Rundown, a contrast of perspectives you won't hear anywhere else. Your daily dose of news twice a day, going far beyond the headlines, tapping into the massive reporting resources of Fox News to provide a full picture of the news of the day. I'm Dana Perino. I'm Brett Baer. I'm Maria Bartiromo. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And this is the Fox News Rundown. Subscribe and listen now by going to foxnewspodcasts.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Election night is here. Join Join us here at News Talk 96.5 KPL as we bring you up-to-the-minute results and expert analysis. Join me, Joe Cunningham, and Jamie Angel, host of Acadiana's Morning News from 6 to 11 p.m. on Tuesday night as we cover every twist and turn in the race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. And don't forget that control of Congress is on the line and we'll be following every House and Senate race that matters to you. Join us on the radio or use the KPL app to listen live online to Election Night 2024, brought to you by the tax pros at Matthew James Tax and Wealth Management. This is Dave from the Dave Matthews Band for Rad. When you go out and party, get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. The YMCA is just a starting line, for the true self blooms only when we find our purpose, what makes us tick below the surface. Why is the before work hustle, an after school home, a section of my block, a corner to call my own? With my why, I stand strong, seen and supported all along. It's a million faces in a mirror and everyone belongs. Find your why. Join today at YMCA.org for a better us. Court-appointed special advocates, or CASA, are specially trained volunteers that help secure safe homes for abused and neglected children. Don't let these innocent victims slip through the cracks of our complicated legal system. Get involved today. Call CASA at 268-5111. This nonprofit organization moment brought to you by News Talk 96.5 KPL. The views expressed in the following show are those of the hosts or hosts only. They do not represent News Talk 96.5 KPL or Town Square Media. <laughs> Welcome back, Moon Graffon Show on the road again, and uh, of course, uh, beautiful Monroe, Louisiana. 
as uh, Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline. Don't forget, Kane Room Pecan Giveaway. By the way, something I didn't say. Uh, I'm going to give away one every day. So at the end of the, this hour, I'm going to pull somebody and give away a Kane Room Pecan Giveaway. I tell you, if you ever want them or you ever bought them or you ever ate them, you will love them. I promise you that. And if you're gifting, man, J.D. Rigo ought to be in there this week. If you're gifting, in, in other words, you buying gifts for your customers, man, you owe it to yourself to at least give them a call. They'll do all the shipping and everything for you. All you do is write the check. They do everything else. That's kind of cool. That's kind of what I've been doing for a long time. And uh, they just, the pecans are absolutely excellent. If you go to their website, Cane River Pecans, that's spelled with a C, C-A-N-E, Cane River that runs through Natchitoches. Uh, that's where they got it from. And I'm just telling you, you will enjoy. So we'll do that at the end of the program. I've got a lot of people, hundreds of people have already registered. You don't have to register every day, but uh, some do, and that's fine. But we're going to give them away at the end of the program. Uh, anyway, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, by the way, and Mr. Paul Hurd, Louisiana Excellence. Go to Louisiana Excellence. He's got his plan for helping the state of Louisiana uh, move forward. Uh, we got five years left to start building something now so in five years we do not lose another congressman. Uh, we, we went from eight to seven to six. You know, at one time I didn't realize we had as many congressmen as Florida. And I don't know how many congressmen Florida got now, but it's at like 27, 29, something like that. And we went down. At one time, did you know that New Orleans was as big as Atlanta? Atlanta was as big as New Orleans. Not even close anymore. And we got the ports and everything down. I was down in that way last week speaking down at Grant. It was kind of cool to drive around. I hadn't been there in a little while and, and see the uh, all the industry that's down there. And wondering how we're not blowing and going with the industry just down in that area of the state. It's just it's phenomenal. But uh, we can't afford to lose another congressman, folks. And, and right now, as I told you, I was at a party. And I've seen a lot of people since I've met. Some I just met the new friends, and some people I've seen I hadn't seen in a while. And it was amazing. I met one family that had a kid that was still in Louisiana, and that kid, his daddy started a business in Lafayette. He lives in Monroe, and he brought one of his kids back from Texas, uh, you know, to Lafayette to run the business. They expanded in their business, and that's 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 good. But... Man, I tell you what, you drive around and you see people and they just, all their kids go, ran it, went to the mall for something, ran it somebody and they had their kid, their beautiful little grandbaby, man, fresh grandbaby, that one of their sons was in town and uh, he was in Atlanta. He just came in for a long weekend to see mom and dad, bring the grandbabies. Most of the time, these people that are leaving too are two Louisiana people. They're not even, it ain't like you met a girl or get met a guy and you left. It's like we met a girl and met a guy. I'm talking about met a girl, met a guy outside the state. You just went with the family, the family business, whatever. No. These are people that, that, that left to get jobs. And uh, Lauren Scott was on last week, and I thought Dr. Scott did a really good job. He talked about uh, North Louisiana just being a depressed area. He wasn't saying that. He wasn't saying that to hurt anybody's feelings. He wasn't saying it at all. He was saying it because he was just being honest that he was concerned about the northern part of the state, especially the Monroe area. So anyway, uh, I just, it's frustrated me for a long time, and I know you can't do anything overnight. I want Governor Landry, by the way, I just got the news, Governor Landry on it with us next Tuesday, which will be February 12th. The session starts Wednesday. And the governor will be on on, on, on on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate him coming on with us. Whether we agree or disagree, and we agree almost, uh, he's going to come sell us the plan that he's, by then, in a week, uh, we'll start seeing some things move and, and rumble through the process, and we'll get a chance to visit with him. So that's next Tuesday. I say next Tuesday. Yeah, the 12th. So looking forward to that. Uh, just to visit with him to see. By then, they're going to have some bills they're trying to get through. I don't know what... Cameron half ass Henry is going to do yet. Uh, I know lobbyists are starting to gear up, right or wrong, for or against. So this is a tough sale, but Louisiana has to change. Has to. 
And it's all start with the economic engine. I know I've preached it a long time, but it's just going to start with the economic engine. If it's not going to start there, then it's not going to end good. We've got to find a way, some kind of way, to change what's going on in the state of Louisiana. And by the way, I'm still getting people. Uh, Representative Brock Myers is having to explain himself over and over and over and over again on something they had on his Facebook about uh, supporting Cleo Fields. He kept saying he didn't support. Matter of fact, I just shout out to Brock. People that are sending me are falling out laughing at the excuse that he's making why he did this. So he keeps saying, I didn't know they were going to utilize this like this, but then why did your company, company you work for that y'all used to own, why did you give $26,000? I mean, that's a legitimate question. Why did you put it on your Facebook? Don't y'all think that's kind of odd? Represent Brock Myers, who wants to run for the Senate if Cocktail Cousin wins the Public Service Commission. Same group of people. Same old good old boy network people in that area. So here we are. We are down to the wire, folks. I think pretty much early voting's over. Okay? The fact is, the Biden-Harris administration delivered more migrants than jobs in October. 100,000 people, illegals, were let in the country. Over 250,000 illegals are paroled. And we only created 12,000 jobs. I'm just telling you. I uh, read another story. It was so sad. I was reading these stories about what some of these illegals are doing and the murders and the rapes and stuff like that. I'm gone, but people think... Kamala Harris is going to change what she's been a part about already? Kamala Harris is causing, calling for unity after smearing Trump as fascist threat to democracy. They've been saying that for a year or longer. You ever? By the way, and, 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 and the media got in trouble. Saturday Night Live had Kamala Harris on. She skipped events in Michigan. So now NBC got caught. Now, they're having to air Trump ads doing NASCAR for equal time law. They put a slick one putting Harris on Saturday Night Live, Saturday night, and they got to give equal time. It's, uh, it's just interesting. And by the way, folks, I'm sticking to my guns. These people cannot afford. They cannot let Trump be president. But I'm hoping the American people wake up. Will Farrell, that's a brainiac, vows to hold people who don't vote for Kamala personally responsible. What is Will Har- what is what is Will Farrell gonna do when he's not on drugs? How's he go? How you gonna hold somebody responsible? But all I can say is, does that mean we're gonna have a lot of violence in the streets from people if Trump wins? I didn't read everything y'all read, folks. I didn't read everything y'all read. I didn't saw where they made up polls in Iowa that Kamala's going to win. I've seen it all the way to Trump in a landslide. Believe none of that stuff. Go vote. If you hadn't voted, go vote. I'm telling y'all, if we can get in the 6th Congressional District, Cleo Fields in a runoff with a close house, we're going to see what Republicans, all of them, big shots, congressmen, everybody, are they going to get involved in this race? We're going to know who's the real conservatives. We're going to know who really wants to change the state. Here it was, illegal Georgia, illegal alien charged with murder and Puerto Rican fitness influencer. I mean, this, this is every day, folks. This is every single day. Every day I'm reading this. And it's so frustrating to read these stories about what these illegals are doing. It just is. You know, uh, Kamala Harris promises more housing and even more illegals. I don't, I don't understand. I guess unless you have somebody di- dead of fentanyl or somebody gets raped in your house, I guess that's the only way you'll see uh, what, what's happening with these illegals that have come across the board. I mean, it's just, it's just phenomenal. But anyway, hey, da- hey uh, da- uh, Walker, let's go ahead and take a break. 
uh, Lyle Miller, like I said, is, is my special guest. He's been a mentor to me for a long time. And by the way, Lyle, I told him, you ain't been a mentor on the radio. He's a guy that's challenged me. We've had uh, differences. We've had great conversations. But he's always taught me how to think a little bit. And uh, can't wait to have him on. It's been a long time since he's been on the program. Some of you people were remembering. And uh, I'll have him on until 11 o'clock. It'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, I hope I can make him laugh like I used to. <laughs> anyway, we'll take a break. We'll be back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. As Louisiana's only fiberglass manufacturer and fabricator, C-Safe Fiberglass Grading and Structural Systems has provided corrosion-resistant products to the Gulf Coast for over 45 years. Our fiberglass grading, cable trays, and structural shapes are ideal to replace corroded, rotting building products and can be custom fabricated by the best fiberglass craftsmen in the world right here in Lafayette. Contact C-Safe or visit our website at csafe.com. That's S-E-A like the ocean, S-A-F-E dot com. If you've got some projects to do around the house and you need the voice of experience, a local voice, somebody that can help you and knows Louisiana, you need to check out Stein Home and Yard. They're a Louisiana company founded, established here. They've been based here. Their story dates back all the way to 1946. Stein Home and Yard has all the things you need to make your house ready for fall. Great deals on fall plants like mums, as well as all sorts of handy items you need for your house. Need to upgrade your power tool game? They've got great deals on DeWalt power tools. They also have great deals on grills for your next tailgate for the big game this weekend. Traeger Pellet Grills, Weber Grills, Charbroil, so many great brands. And it's all right there at your fingertips. Just pull them up, steinhome.com. Steinhome.com is where you need to go to find the greatest deals on your home improvement needs. Steinhome.com, a great Louisiana company. This is Moon Graffon. The sun has never raised its rates, but your local energy company sure has. Solar Louisiana can install residential home solar systems with huge battery storage, or they can add batteries to your existing system. If there's an outage, you are sitting pretty with all the electricity you need. Imagine electric bills so low, you can pay it with pocket change you find in your couch. Solar Louisiana has the experience you need to make the right decision. Online at solarlouisiana.net. Your energy independence company, Solar Louisiana. Do you crave off? Atlas Foundation Repair, 800 256 1010. Louisiana owned Atlas Foundation Repair, 800 256 1010. Call Tony Opino. I have known him for years. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. It is great to be back with you. We've got the Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline. And, of course, you're always welcome, 844-766-6607. I've been looking forward to this because he's a guy that, and Lyle, I said this, and Lyle's probably going, can't believe you told him I was a mentor. Lyle Miller back in the house. Good to see you, man. Well, it's great to be here. you got half your listeners. Uh, one half of your nine and a half are here today. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the days in the oh, early days. Oh, it was early days. I as, uh, started out on Saturday morning. My first oh, yeah. interview was Governor Dave Train and uh, it was it was lonely. Well, people people didn't understand it was a it was piecemeal Monday, uh, Wednesday, or Monday, Thursday, and it's Saturday mornings, and you piecemeal and you can't only build audience. And I never f- forget walking into Bob Lyle and saying, "Hey, I I need to go every day in the morning." He laughed at me. Holiday, I come in and tell a story. He said, it "Was so funny." He said, "Man, I got a great morning program." He said, "Uh, he said uh, that ain't gonna change." And about two months later, he called me and he said, "You still want it?" Because there was some changes making, and I got it. When I went a while and I said, I have to have two hours, and he laughed at me again. And I told him both times, I said, when it comes open, I want it. He said, when it comes open, he laughed. It came open, and G. Gordon Liddy was removed, and I was put on. So it, it, it's been fun, but it's good it's to see fun, you. But we've always, we've always laughed, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't remember our good friend C.B. for gospel. Oh, yeah. Good, good you, Lord, you did you I laugh with him. him. Oh, well, I introduced you. I found him through Phil Price, I think. But, man, did we have some fun. Yeah, he – uh. I had read about his stuff. You read about him, but when you set in for me, when you used to do that a little bit, uh, you got him on a, as a guest. And that's that's how I met CB. I met him through you because – and you just met him through the radio show. Right. He, he was, it was just a lot of fun. But you've always turned humor. Uh, <laughs> you gotta, you can't got to laugh our way through life a little bit. It's too serious. Uh, you know, it is. And, uh, you know, when you get around these presidential elections – you know, we go through them every four years, and uh, they're not fun anymore. And so I'm not saying they ever were. You were a guy that was involved in 
Louisiana politics and you were involved in governor's races. And I got to believe it was kind of similar because those races were so tough and so tight. They were for Republicans. Now we're, you're, you've got two people here that still have a face for radio <laughs> and neither one of us, we started with Republicans and now we're neither, neither one of us. Are. We're out of the Republican party and I yeah. can not going to waste time talking about how I got there. I got there before you did. You did. Um, you did. So did CB. But, yeah, but it was. Um, it started with um, Governor Jindal, which was one of the funniest stories I've ever. When you went to get coffee and left him in here uh, answering a question. Oh yeah, that's. Oh, uh, that. I mean, I die laughing every time. I, well, his Ruth, thirty-two point plan. So. Ruth was. Uh, <laughs> Ruth was broadcast. My producer at the time, and and she said, I said Jindal's on again. And Bruce was lining up. I said, my God, he came on you know, nine times in nine days. But anyway, I said, okay. So when this, the music started, I said, look, as soon as I uh, ask a question, I'm going to get up and go to the bathroom and get a cold drink. And she said, huh? She said, what? I said, no, don't worry about it. He'll be talking when I get back. She said, don't do that. Don't. Came on, I introduced, asked the question. I literally was gone for about a minute and a half. Yeah. I went to the bathroom. I got a drink. I came in here, and Ruth was moving her hand going, he's still talking. <laughs> He could filibuster a question. He he knew when the hard breaks were coming. He, no, could. he would, You could ask him one and get eight. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, we had a lot of fun like that. And, and uh, some of the elected officials back then who might have got mad at me, I think they had more fun then. They take it more serious now. And, and that's okay. I've given more nicknames than I ever have. And some of them take it personal. But, you know, a lot of them are always based on what you say and what you do. One of the problems we ran in the Republican Party was really not the party. I'll tell people all the time. It's the people who represented the party that got voted in a certain way and then did something else, and we never did do anything about it. No bricks and mortar. Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, Remember that? Yeah, right here with these headsets on at the dinner table in the mansion. No bricks and mortar. uh, I told Community colleges, and it was in the law. And look at the – I'm not against community colleges. My gosh, but my Lord, we can't keep up the buildings on the university campuses. You have declining birth rates. And we got new fifty million dollar buildings all over town, uh, all over the state. Excuse me. People don't. I tell people all the time they don't remember we went. Me and you went to see Mike Foster, but we yeah. also had rounds, and we liked Mike and a lot of things. But when he did the community colleges, we were for it. But Mike and him said no bricks and mortar, and now we got bricks and matter of fact, and to credit to Governor Landry, there was twenty million dollars allotted for another Delta Darbone, on yeah. Lake Darbone. Yeah, I couldn't believe I saw that. Yeah. It uh, and they took the two year degrees away from the four year colleges, and yep. we got to, so you got redundancies of presidents and yada yada yada. But I'm not going to go there. We're in, I know, but I'm just saying uh, that was all part of the history of you being on a program. Yeah, it's, we've we've seen a lot, heard a lot. But that funny about that lunch, we were riding down there, and I said, "Now, Moon, the governor said he wants to hear." What people are saying on the radio <laughs> and what the callers are saying. And I said, well, let, do me a favor. Don't say anything till they ask you a question. <laughs> I learned a lot from you. you wanted so it we, were, we were almost through with the main course, and he, he never asked you a question. He t- told you what people. And then he t- tried to tell me who I started my life auditing colleges in Mississippi, right out of college in Mississippi with a uh, Mississippi legislature. Went to school in Mississippi. And he wants to tell me how many colleges were in Mississippi, and I've been on every county. I said, where are you getting this information? He said, well, that's what my age tell me. That's what my I, people tell me. That's what my people yeah. tell me. And I said, well, you need to fire them. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I never forget, we sat there with Foster, and he started in about Mississippi and the college and the number, and Lyle said, well, Governor, I, I worked that. I did that. That's not true. Oh, no, no, that is true. That's what he in other words, we couldn't say nothing else. But you just you were real honest with him. He didn't care about hearing it. Well, the good thing is you got we got a nice lunch and a, <laughs> a, a knife pointed at us a couple of times in between his fights. You know, and and you got some good fishing trips. <laughs> yep, I got one. <laughs> one. Then after that, trip. it kind of went south. Went south. Uh, I had Blanco. Uh, I went to see Governor Blanco. She called me in, and uh, I've been to see Bell. Bell Edwards. Bell called me, and I went to see him, and uh, it was all respectful. Wow. And same thing with. Uh, Edwards didn't let me bring anybody. He promised it was just me and him. It was me, him, little Richard Carbo. It was Mark Cooper. And then his wife came in. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't want me to bring anybody. And I just thought, oh, my God. So I, Bobby Jenner was the only one that – I ain't seen Lander either, but Bobby Jenner was the only one that never would invite me. And he was the one disappointed me the most because – he changed the day he was one. The day he won, he was a different person. Yeah. Well, he was on your show what thirty-two times, and then never... forty-three times in eighteen months. Forty-three times, in eighteen months, and never came back. One zero like in the two, and zero hey. in the eight years. So, hold up, we still on that, brother. Wait a hold up, Gene. Oh, uh, so we came on 
43 times in 18 months. Zero times as a, as, you good, you good, you good, you good. Zero times as a governor. Well, let's talk about inflation when we get back. All right, no, we got inflation. I got a, I got a new inflation story. Okay, I want to do inflation, but Lyle's expertise, 37 years in the medical business. I want to talk a little bit about that as well. We'll get back. Lyle Miller, my special guest, good old friend. Take a break. Be right back. I've been bragging about Dino Hardwoods for a long time. A good friend, Charles Altman. They do an excellent job. And if you're looking for unique or hard-to-find hardwood, lumber, plywood, and molding, is Dino Hardwoods. That's where you need to go. DinoHardwoods.com. DinoHardwoods.com. Trust Dino Hardwoods for all your hardwood, lumber, and cypress needs. With the holiday season fast approaching, as you know, a timeless handmade gift using quality lumber by Dino just means more. With three great locations to serve you now, Broussard, Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, and now he's expanded in Tyler, Texas. Folks, there's something for every discerning woodworker at Dino. Go to DinoHardwoods.com, DinoHardwoods.com, and check out the unique and hard-to-find hardwood, lumber, plywood, and molding that you can't just find anywhere. Charles Altman, trust me, is not a better man in the business. He knows what he's doing, and he wants to service you. DinoHardwoods.com. DinoHardwoods.com. If you are a loved one or suffering from addiction, listen to Springfield Wellness Center's founder, Paula Norris Metayer. We help people through their detox with minimal withdrawal symptoms. Even though it's a 10-day treatment, I look at the first four or five days as the brain restoration piece. And when the brain restoration piece turns on, that's when we have patients go, wow. A light bulb turned on or a switch was turned on. All of a sudden, their prefrontal cortex is working (laughs) and their midbrain is also working. They're not craving. They're thinking clearly. They see things clearly and they have more confidence. Put your addiction behind you. Call Springfield Wellness Center, 225-755-9566. Just call us. That's all. And we'll be waiting for you. 225-755-9566. 755-9566. Springfield Wellness Center. Springfieldwellnesscenter.com. Do you have health? This hour brought to you by the Matthew James Tax Pros. Find them online at matthewjamestaxpros.com. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show back in KMLB, where it all started for me 31 years ago. And uh, it's the Matthew James Business Tax Reduction Hotline. It's always good to come back home. It all started. Don't forget, Cane River Pecan Giveaway. We give away somebody in the uh, right before we get off, uh, before the 11 o'clock hour. My good friend Lyle Miller is in the house, and I appreciate Lyle taking some time. Lyle gives you a lot of wisdom on a lot of things. He's watched it. You mentioned inflation when we were leaving, which, by the way, is way worse than tax increases, I think. Well, my, my latest inflation uh, example was yesterday morning. I always go by and before I go to Mass and get a dozen donuts to take to, to the uh, assisted living where my yeah. mother is and everybody has a donut. So for dec- you know, for a year or whatever I go in, it was nine ninety five for a dozen donuts. So I drive up yesterday and hand the guy a $10 bill and he goes, well, I'm so sorry. Things have gone up and I, I have to raise eleven sixty. So I'm driving off. I'm thinking, 16% increase? I thought inflation was 2.5%. And I so uh, it's just close. incremental across the board. And, and, you know, buck 60 is not going to change me from buying a donuts from my mother and her friends. But that's 16% increase. But the guy said, I'm sorry. Everybody's having to raise their donut prices because of uh, the input costs. So. Well, when I make a comment that inflation's way worse than tax increases, I think you just said one cent Versus sixteen percent is that's that's a difference. That's right. a hell of a difference. And it ain't just that law. I, I don't know how people are gonna buy vehicles one day. All this Green New Deal, new money. When I was driving in Monroe, I was so disappointed to see these solar farms. I don't care who's making the money; they're making it on the backs of me, you, and everybody else. I'm sorry, take it personal. Your ships come in, I get it, but that's the reason why we're having the problems. And and I want to go into the presidential race with you a little bit, and the fact that. If Harris wins, we already know what's going to happen. If Trump wins, 
is still a problem. If you don't have the House and the Senate and doesn't have the votes, you can't change a lot. And so either one that becomes president, we got a problem. Well, and I'm not, now by the way, and I'm a Trump guy. I, 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 I want Trump to win. I want his policies. Me and you have talked about this a thousand times. But you still got to be able to get stuff passed. And, man, what they're doing in Washington that's causing the inflation problem, how does that stop? How do you stop that? Well, you, it kind of comes down to one thing they can do is, is the executive orders. And we saw all of his get rescinded. And Everyone. 80 new Biden ones in, and things have gone sideways since then. So whether uh, I watch a lot of Squawk Box and other business shows and read a lot, and uh, everybody's saying, well, we got to protect, you know, Trump can't get this stuff through, or Kamala can't get that stuff through. We don't, what they say doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> executive orders matter. Sure. Supreme Court picks matter. Uh, department selection for the regulatory agencies, they matter. They matter big time. So, yes, you got to get through Congress, and there may be compromise there, but the executive pieces do matter. Yeah. Uh, whether you're in the state government. I know what you're saying. It does matter who's president. It absolutely matters who's president. You, uh, but the inflation thing, it, 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 listen, you got a better history of it than me. But I'm going to tell you what I've learned through the process as a college kid and to today is that if you're printing money and running up debt, and we've talked about this a lot, you're eventually going to have to stop doing that because eventually it's going to bring us down. I mean, I looked at every country in the world that's done this. It was never ended good. How does Congress quit spending so much damn money? Because if they're not going to quit spending it, it's no way for inflation to change. Yeah, I wish I could remember all the, the ins and outs, but it was a great article comparing uh, why the demise of the Roman Empire. And it ultimately ended up with complacency and, and uh, overspending and printing money. And it brought the empire down. So, uh, yes, you can be strong, you can be powerful, you can become complacent. Uh, and But uh, pride goeth before the fall. Yep. And we've, to this point, uh, you and I laugh. I feel yeah, I saw a cartoon years ago, a guy with a sign, the end is near, and he was mm -hmm. sitting on the park bench with the sign down because the end hadn't come yet. <laughs> and I feel like I'm the guy that's sitting on the park bench. Well, I've been for 20 years saying you can't spend, you can't spend. Well, somehow you... But guess what? You can't spend locally, and you can't spend um, statewide because of balanced budget. So the only one left is print money is federal government. And so the state's dependent on the federal money. Uh, local government, school boards are all dependent on state federal, and federal money. And yeah. with federal money comes federal regulation, and that becomes more people, more uh, more people to hire, uh, laws to follow. The administrative cost of everything has gone up because of that. What up? Uh uh, you kind of wonder if they told us states that we got to cut state government, federal government money, we got to cut 10 to 15% what will happen to the states, what will happen to local governments, because there may come a time that happens. And if it does, it's, it, it ain't going to be pretty. I, I mean, I, me and you, once again, 20 years we've been saying it's going to happen. It hasn't happened. But when it happens, it's going to be bad. Well, sooner or later, uh, the market, I believe in demand and supply and the market, and sooner or later, the market's going to demand higher interest rates because you print money and you've devalued it. And the good news is for us, we've gotten a little away with it because everyone's printing money, from the Chinese to... Yeah, we're on to the top the, of the crap pile. That's right. So I talked to Senator Kennedy. Uh, he was on last week, but I had him on a few months before that. And I said, Senator Kennedy, you up there, you've been up there a while. Let me ask you a question. I said, on an economy... If this thing ever implodes, what's the answer for all this debt that's being run up? He said, well, Moon, we got good news. They're still buying our debt. I don't understand that, con uh, Senator. What happens if they stop? He said, we're in big trouble. I said, well, don't you think for Congress, Republican and Democrats, if they really care, really care about people back home and people's lives and people doing well, don't you think they ought to quit spending? I mean, don't you think? And, and look, it, it, Republicans can't sit with you and me. And argue with us that they spend it too, because they have. Oh, bipartisan government's the most expensive. <laughs> I hate bipartisanship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody gets what they want, so we we just get deeper in the hole. So no, I, I just say that all the time. I said, please don't brag about bipartisanship. They do it with our state. I said that's the worst thing happened. Bipartisanship got us nineteen billion dollars of backlog in a row. Bipartisanship, we went from eight congressmen to six, and probably gonna go to five. <laughs> you know, bipartisanship. We have a hot migration problem. That's what bipartisanship looks like. Am I, tell me I'm wrong. Uh, no, it, uh, it's the most expensive government you can have. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, we, we need some partisanship, one way or the other. We, we do do that. So. Well, one of the other things that, uh, and I want to do some medical stuff in the last segment, but I wanted to bring up this. Uh, me and you have been watching Wendy's close 150 places, True Value. I think they ended up selling out, but they were closing. Right. Uh, uh, dirt Cheap is closing. Uh, and, and there's some other big ones that I'm not mentioning. There's a bunch of big companies either closing, downsizing. But that's not got hardly any mention in the media. No, I know it's an election. I know who they're pulling for. But I always find that disturbing. It's not cutting back in the fact that we're going to try to change our method of doing it. I mean, they're cutting stuff out. They're closing stuff. What do you read into something like that? A dollar store. Not the dollar store, but the family dollar. dollar, dollar, family dollar yeah. yeah, so... Those are those are the little people running out all the time. So, what do you make of that? Well, businesses, whether in any business, you have to constantly reinvent yourself a little bit to uh, maintain your market edge. And so, tried and true things have, have been attacked. You know, Walmart, others have put the the heat. Amazon certainly has brought goods into people's homes, uh, at our home and anybody else's. So it makes the big boxes hard. Uh, but bottom line, they couldn't change their model. They borrowed money to stay alive, and sooner or later, the the banks call the notes, and that's what's happening on these businesses. They they either had private equity or they had bank financing, and they can't do it anymore. Seemed like it's picked up more in the last half of this year. Well, Have you seen that enough? Yeah, inflation I think uh, is hidden in the sense that we see what's on the news, and it, but when people get raises, health insurance going up ten or fifteen percent a year for your group health plans and. Uh, your interest rates go from through four and a half, four, four and a half percent to eight and a half to ten percent. If you're long, if you have a lot of debt, uh, your bottom line is going to be pressured hard. Yeah. And yeah. employee costs. I mean, employees now are fifteen dollars an hour if they show up for work. Yeah. And, and finding uh, people I, to show up for work is the hardest thing you anybody I, can I, have. I always thought it was funny. Uh, Harris is preaching it. Bell was preaching about a minimum wage increase. Who cares what the minimum wage is? They, they ain't paying way over that anyway. Yes. So I don't, even, I don't think that's a, 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 a really a brainstorm idea to go think about that because times are changing and not necessarily good when it comes to inflation. Well, the minimum wage, you know, it, it should be tiered. I've always said it should be tiered. When I was 14 years old working at the car wash, I didn't need to be paid the minimum wage. Or I should have lower minimum wage. Then I had I was working next to men who had who had families yeah, who should be yeah. paid more, and they had more seniority, and they're stronger, and they're bigger, and they were knew what they were doing more so than I did. So taking high school kids, I think minimum wage hurts teaching people to work, yeah. and they need everybody needs the first job. Yeah, and it can't be fifteen dollars an hour. They're not worth fifteen dollars. The hour. first job may be about a little bit about money, but it's really more about you doing something than getting your work habit. Let me take a break. Right. When we come back, Lyle has. 37 years in the medical business, and I want him to talk a little bit about Medicaid, Medicare, what worries him, uh, especially Medicare, uh, what worries him up the road, and what is he seeing in that business. His name is Lyle Miller. He's my special guest. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Nestled in gently rolling hills in North Louisiana is a place that produces the finest Louisiana wines around, Landry Vineyards. This place is phenomenal. Not only are they passionate about growing wine grapes and making Landry Vineyards wine, they also have cottages and RV sites you can rent, tours, and live music on Saturdays and tastings Monday through Saturday. Available in over 650 stores throughout Louisiana, I encourage you to visit and try Landry Wine direct from Landry Vineyards. This is another great Louisiana company that has my full support, and they are Louisiana certified. A red blend they labeled Bayutage, Blackberry Merlot, Cabs, Rosé, Petite Sarah, dry and sweet whites, and many, many other wines. Learn more about their wines and their vineyard online at LandryVineyards.com. This is Moon Graffon. My lovely bride and I love the wines from this great Louisiana company, Landry Vineyards, and so will you. Go visit their beautiful winery and find them in your local grocery store. If they don't have Landry Vineyards wine, ask and ask again. LandryVineyards.com. Woo, good wine right here. It started with direct messages. That's how they got to my son. Gavin was just 17 and looking forward to college. 
he was contacted by online predators pretending to be a teenage girl. He was the victim of sexual extortion. In less than two hours after that first message, Gavin died by suicide. It's a pain I don't want any other parent to feel. Social media is causing an epidemic of bullying, anxiety, and depression, and it's leaving kids vulnerable to the kind of predators that targeted my son. We have to hold big tech accountable and pass the Kids Online Safety Act. I couldn't protect my son, but now it's my mission to make sure all kids are protected. I'm a father and a proud conservative, and I'm here to tell Speaker Johnson, pass the Kids Online Safety Act, because nothing is more important than protecting our kids. Paid for by Issue 1 Action, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. Issue1action.org. The IRS is... Hey, hello, welcome back. Moon Graffon Show, last segment of this hour. And, of course, the Matthew James Business Hotline. Lyle Miller, my special guest. Uh, Lyle, I want to jump gears with you real quick with the time we got left. And I got to I gotta pull up a winner on this thing, so I apologize. But, you uh, you know, we had this big Medicaid expansion of Obamacare. And I was going to tell you, my premiums in uh, this coming January are going to be $3,299.09 a month. Thank you, Obamacare, for lowering them prices. They have skyrocketed every year for me. But forget me. This Medicare for all. You know, when they were pushing the Green New Deal, we laughed at what they said. Now it's on us. They've been pushing Medicare for all for many, many years, too. Where are we going? I mean, Medicare has enough problems, don't it? You go put young people and illegals and all that on Medicare, older people, which it was designed for, they're going to get in line, and it's not going to be good. So how well are we on Medicare? Because well, nobody's talking about it. Well, what they're not talking about is the uh, decline in, in providers. And uh, so many people are aging out. It started under the Clinton administration. They decided that we need more primary care and less specialist. And about that time, you had uh, females and others do really, really well in school, and they make up a large portion. But they have a lot of demands at home with their families. So they're not the, the old school doctors you and I grew up with that work 60, 70 hours a week. They're not there anymore. And it's not law and they're not law practices either or CPA practices. People are going, what's my quality of life going to be? Well, what happened is you, we still have as much demand as we ever had. We didn't increase the supply of physicians. And now the physicians are saying they're going to work shorter hours. And medicine is a 24-7 deal. No one wants to work nights. Nobody wants to work weekends. When do you have a heart attack? When do you have a... When <laughs> Whenever. You, you know, when do you fall out of a deer stand? Whatever. It's going to be a typical weekend, and no one wants to work. And what I've watched is a consolidation of, of the physician practices under hospitals umbrellas. You know, it started out with, you know, Affinity or, you know, some other HMOs. It started out with HMOs. Let's just state why. Now it's hospitals employing these physicians. But didn't all of you get stop your, right? Didn't that happen because of Obamacare? It happened because you could, you know, most whether it's Blue Cross or United Healthcare, Aetna, all their reimbursements are based on some percentage of Medicare. Okay. Medicare has been dropping. The reimbursement's been dropping, as a doctor said the other day from Baton Rouge. He said, "I'm working for 1992 wages under Medicare." Under Holy 2024 wow. cost, his nursing costs are up, his group health insurance is up, his office rents up, but every year they cut Medicare. They you know they cut seven percent, cut three percent, cut two percent. What business can have price cuts every year? And at a time when your supply is about to retire out, all those 1980s doctors are going to be heading to retirement, yeah. and you haven't expanded your residency programs and I, and then you're going to add people on top of that. But this is nationwide we're talking about. Nationwide. It's not Louisiana. I'm in a nationwide. nationwide. I used to compete in the state to recruit physicians. Now it's a national and with uh, particularly radiology it's teleradiology. They can work from Nebraska and read films in Louisiana. So they're all going to the highest bidder and uh, hospitals are having to supplant or, or put stipends, and, and they're paying everyone to take call. 
I mean, Tanya is a nurse. She yeah. understood that if you worked on the weekend, you got paid more. You worked mm-hmm. at night, you got paid she more. She did that a lot. And that was time. my point to Senator Cassidy that I didn't get a response to. Why don't you pay doctors that are working nights and weekends more? And you're giving them incentive. You're giving them incentive. Yeah. And Medicare should be paying them more. Not the same to read from uh, eight to five in the daytime. They're, if they're gonna, if I'm gonna crack my head and hit it to you know falling somewhere, I want somebody to read my X-ray, uh, and Good it could point. be any time of day. Well, Al, do you see? You don't see Medicare getting better, do you? No, it's you see, it got worse, right? So it's, it's my demand. question to you it's is: demand. Is it a design? I don't believe none of this is action. Is it designed eventually for the government to say, "Let us take it over"? When it's really the government that put the pressure on people. I'm just kind of curious. Well, I, what you I'm think. not. A, I'm not a conspiracy person, but I do believe when the man says, "Don't let a good, uh, good." Uh, yeah, Rahm Emanuel. Rahm Emanuel, and don't let a crisis go to waste. They're not going to let a crisis go to waste, and uh, they will use it to expand. Yeah, and that's that. That was my concern because back when Obama was running, when they started all this stuff, they uh, Obamacare really expanded Medicaid. It was the government coming in and doing that too. And I don't. That program too is a problem. I mean, that's a, that's a big problem, too. Am I wrong by saying that's a problem? No. Money-wise, I know it is. No. And you've got all these, uh, I see it in my office, you, and, and they'd say, well, God, where do these people get their, their calling and their, they have health care? And they're yeah. in their 20s. I said, where are they getting their health care? They're not working. So they're, they're, st- they're not working or no visible work uh, on their, when they come into the doctor's offices. They don't show any work, but yet they have coverage. So you're expanding, uh, and that means they're not paying in. Where if they were working, they may be paying 20% of the premium or 30% of the premium, depending on where they're working. So they're they're getting it. Um, they're getting health care from somewhere. Medicaid expansion, probably the primary. But Medicaid expansion has a lot of hooks in it too, don't you think? Well, I think I, again, I'm not a conspiracy person, but uh, whether. By default, by allowing these medical practices across the state to be rolled up into the hospitals, it's a very easy step from the government to the hospitals. The gov- the hospitals are having to come out of money from other areas of the hospital to pay these people. When I saw when COVID came along, and I know it was new and people were freaking out, I thought everybody being on the hospitals actually hurt us. And then you had the federal government tell them everything to do. And if you want the money, this is how we're going to do it. And what did they do? They lined up. Well, they, I mean, got, I'm, not, I'm not saying they didn't do some things good. I'm just yeah. telling them they lined up because here's the money. Here's what we're doing. Well, all I would ask the listeners of Louisiana to do, just think about all the physicians and now employees of hospitals are associated with the hospital. So it's only one step, and the money's coming from federal government. Over 60% of their revenue comes from Medicare and Medicaid. So if I've got 60% of the market share, I'm going to dictate the terms. Oh, yeah. And so it's easy then, if all the doctors are working for the hospital, it's easy for the government to tell the hospital what to but do. That's what happened. If you were giving me $2,000 a month to do the job, I'm going to do it your way. You know, I'm not going to be around. Correct. Lyle Miller's his name. Right. You've been a great friend. Lyle, thank you. A lot of fun. Always good to see you. Always man. good it's to see you. It's great to see you. All right, we've got to take a break. Uh, by the way, the winner, the winner is Timothy Babin Gonzalez. Cane River Pecans It's on the way. God bless. We'll play again tomorrow. Our state is facing a budget shortfall left over by the last governor. Jeff Landry and the legislature already cut $2 billion for spending we don't need. Now they have to deal with this shortfall, but they've got a plan to deal with that and move Louisiana forward. This is what Governor Landry said. This Louisiana forward plan, when fully implemented by the legislature and ratified by the people of this state, will produce more jobs, a greater prosperity, lower our taxes, and bring us a sustainable budget. This plan cuts taxes for the middle class and all taxpayers, with the income tax rate dropped to just 3%. Job creators can grow the economy with lower taxes. Families and senior citizens, no more prescription drug sales tax. A different tax system which focuses on choices, not labor. And the Louisiana voters, we get the final say. 
fixing the shortfall, cutting taxes, growing our economy. Now that's moving Louisiana forward. Paid for by Protect Louisiana Values. The Moon Griffon Merchandise Store is now open. Go to moongriffon.com right now and click on Merchandise. There you'll find men's tees, ladies' tees, polos, fishing shirts, lounge pants, hats, and more. Through November 15th, a portion of the proceeds will benefit the Cajun Navy hurricane relief efforts. Show your love for the Moon Griffon Show by purchasing some Moon Griffon merch. Go to moongriffon.com right now and click on merchandise. For the absolute best in local Cajun food, check out Prejean's in their two locations in Karen Crow and Broussard today.